The way in which bones respond is based off of the said principle, specific adaptations to impose demands, which is the physiological principle that states tissues respond to unique stresses on them in such a way as to ensure they can resist the disruption of homeostasis based on that unique stress. The resultant response in adaptation will be strictly to the imposed demands of needing to reestablish homeostasis. Subsequent exposure to that identical stress maintains the original adaptation. However, if a new or different stress is encountered, there will be a continual development adaptation to the varying levels of stress, the end result of which forms in the bone areas that become more resistant to the initial stress. The way in which bones function within this said principle is based off of what's known as Wolf's Law of Bone Remodeling. Wolf's Law is the physiological law detailing how the said principle relates to bone physiology, in which bones respond to stresses that cause intrinsic vibrations to the salt crystals in the matrix based off of the change in geometric load. This difference in geometric load and the disruptive microstructural arrangement to the crystals within the lamina cause a distinct distribution in response to lines of pull changed based on the levels of forces that impact the bone and the bone tissue therein. These lines of pull come from gravitational load of the bone, kinematic movements of the bone acting as levers in correspondence to muscle contraction, the force of the muscle tendon acting at an insertion point, and the force of ligaments acting at the insertion points. All of these lines of pull forces lead to changes within the bone matrix, either through geometric rearrangement or an increase in the amount of bone matrix present. The result is due to the necessity to maintain a stable line of dielectric and piezoelectric properties within the matrix and the hydroxyapatite crystal, resulting in an isoelectric pattern established within the matrix. This pattern is disrupted whenever vibrations occur to the crystal matrix due to loading and unloading of the bone. In response, a change occurs to the pattern of load in which there are two distinct growth patterns that will occur. The predominant growth pattern is in response to ocular growth due to a shear, a torsional, or a rotational load change, or cortical growth in response to excessive compressive and tensile forces. What this does is this establishes a change in the elastic and plastic nature of the bone, making the bone more resistant to the various vibrations due to loading and unloading. Let's go through Wolf's Law as a schematic representation of what's occurring. The issue here is of a site-specific adaptation to cause bone tissue to become more resistant to stress-strain relationship from loading of the bone that causes a differential response due to a change in the internal geometry of the bone's architecture. This change in stress initiates a change within the tissue's own stress-strain responsiveness, leading to changes at the cellular level in an attempt to change the geometry of the bone matrix to withstand the stress-strain curve adaptation in order to keep the bone below the yield point and resist the energy being imparted to it so that it does not reach the fracture energy point. Due to the change in isoelectric stimulus, we get a trigger. This trigger causes a systemic 
as well as an autocrine and paracrine hormone response. The autocrine paracrine hormone response initiates a change in osteocyte activity. This change in osteocyte activity causes a change in osteoclastic recruitment in areas of load and a change in osteoblastic activity in areas of high load. In areas of low load, we get an increase in osteoclastic recruitment, causing an increase in osteoclastic activity and a diminishment of bone matrix in the area where we do not have the load experienced. In the area where the load is being experienced, we have an increase in osteoblastic activity, which causes an increase in the bone matrix. In addition to these internal stimulus from the isoelectric changes, we have external stimuluses due to changes in anabolic and catabolic hormone signals, as well as changes in metabolic signals triggering the bone to change its osteocyte action. The end result is a change in the matrix material, amount of mineralization, and the geometry of the bone matrix, bone matrix itself in an attempt to ensure that the load force remains below the yield point so that we have energy return within the bone matrix itself and the bone does not reach its failure point.